Hi everyone. Today we'll be starting with abrasion and polishing agents. Uh, this is generally asked as a short note in the examination. So first we have to know what is abrasion. Okay. So abrasion is the wearing away uh, of a substance or structure through mechanical process such as grinding, rubbing, or scraping. So what it means is that if I have a structure like this tooth, so maybe removal of the surface um, through grinding, rubbing. Or scraping it off. So basically, like removing the surface, it is called abrasion. Okay. What is the mechanism of action? So it is cutting action. So whatever uh, abrasion we do, it is using a microstructure. So we insert, let's say, a burr or some abrasive agent, and it will act like a micro chisel. Okay. So it will remove a small amount of structure from here, and that will act as a micro chisel. So it is a cutting action. now classifications so what type of abrasives do we have we have finishing abrasives we have polishing abrasives and we have cleansing abrasives okay so what are finishing abrasives uh, these are hard and coarse okay so coarse means larger uh, in grain size uh, they are used to develop contour and remove gross irregularities so they are mainly used to remove like bigger irregularities okay then we have polishing abrasives so they are finer okay and they are less hard they are used for smoothing the surfaces okay and this is done after we are done with abrasion so after we have removed like larger irregularities then we remove the smaller very finer irregularities and for that we use polishing abrasives okay and then we have cleansing abrasives so they are very uh, soft and they have small particle size they remove soft debris okay on enamel or restorative material And then let's talk about polishing what is actually polishing so there's a difference although polishing is a type of abrasive process but there is a slight difference between the two so what happens in polishing uh, there is a production of smooth mirror like image uh, mirror like surface without much loss of any external form so what happens is let's say if this was a surface okay and it had this irregularities so what abrasion would do let's say these are the irregularities on the surface so what abrasion would do it will remove this part okay it will remove this part now what polishing will do it will remove the remaining finer part okay this part and also it will fill in this part this depression using the debris that came out from these irregular structures okay so it is giving a very smooth mirror like surface how by removing um sorry it is giving a very mirror like surface how by removing this part okay these irregular irregularities and it is also filling in these depressions we had okay so that is the difference between abrasion and polishing Abra abrasion was just simply removing the irregularities but in polishing we are also filling in the gaps as well okay so what is the mechanism of action it removes material molecule by molecule okay fine scratches and irregularities are filled by powdered particulates that are being removed from the surface so what i just told you and then a micro crystalline layer called polish layer or bailey's layer is formed so this very thin layer that is formed after polishing it is called belbice layer or polish layer okay then what is the difference between abrasion and polishing so we'll look over here uh, in abrasion uh, sorry in abrasive agents we have larger particle size the uh, size and they produce scratches okay uh, in polishing agents Uh, we use the same abrasive we can use the same abrasive but they will have small particle size okay the material removed is larger the material removed is very little less than 0.005 mm okay speed so if we talk about the linear speed of the any instrument or burr or whatever we are using so it is higher in case of polishing agents okay so it has to be around 10000 feet per minute for polishing and for abrasion it is around 7500 feet per minute now we can also have non abrasive polishing so imagine if we have this structure okay it has some elevations and some depressions and this is an irregular structure to give it a smooth finish a mirror like finish what we can do we can cover all of this okay and now this surface will be very smooth mirror like okay 
so uh, for this what we can this is called non abrasive polishing where we're not removing anything we're just putting a coat on it so for this we can do glazing we studied that in ceramics so you can use composite or ceramics for glazing you can do electrolytic polishing so basically you will deposit some material on the surface of uh, whatever restorative thing you're using or we can do burnishing okay now talking about the abrasion and polishing agents what agents do we use so there are 15 agents that are mentioned in the textbook uh, i'll give you the names and what they contain and their uses you don't have to remember all of them just remember 5 to 7 that'll be sufficient for your short note okay so firstly we have emery it is one of the oldest material we use it is mainly aluminum oxide and uh, it is aluminum oxide called corundum okay so there are lot of names for aluminum oxide depending on its composition and on which stage it is extracted so over here it is corundum and uh, it also contains iron oxide that is an impurity but that can also act as an abrasive okay so it is an abrasive and the more amount of aluminum oxide you have the finer is the polishing agent or the abrasive agent okay um then we have aluminum oxide itself it is extracted from bauxite it is used for polishing and in sand blasting machines so sand blasting machines are used for micro etching okay it will create like a roughness on the surface that will make binding of any restorative material easier okay so it is used over there then we have garnet so it is it can it is made up of silicates of aluminium cobalt manganese iron and magnesium okay it is a mixture of many silicates and where it is used so it is coated on these discs which are used for polishing okay and on, these discs are used on hand piece then we have pumice so it is of volcanic origin and it is used for smoothing denture and polishing teeth so we use it in prosto and um, perio then we have kissel gold it is used uh, it is extracted from diatoms and it is used as a filler in many dental material plus it is a mild abrasive and polishing agent then we have tripoli which is also a porous rock so kind of similar to kissel gold and then it is also a mild abrasive and polishing agent we have rock which is iron oxide okay it is coated on a cloth or paper and it is called crocus cloth and it is used for polishing gold and noble metals so this question is sometimes asked okay so it is used for uh, polishing gold and noble metal then we have tin oxide so it can be used as a paste with uh, you can make the paste using water alcohol or glycerin and it is used for polishing teeth and any metallic restoration then we have chalk so chalk is calcium carbonate it is extracted by precipitation and it is used in toothpaste then we have chromic oxide so it is used for polishing stainless steel then we have sand so it is extracted from quartz or it is uh, derived from quartz and it is used in sand paper and again sand plastering what i told you we have carbide so carbide burrs are really popular Uh, it is how it is made so silicon and boron they are heated at a very high temperature so that they fuse with carbon okay after that they are coated on wheel or disc or they are um, made into burrs like these okay then we have diamond burrs which are the most popular uh, burrs we used so how it is uh, made the diamond it is um, binded or electroplated on the burr okay it is used to make stone disc or burrs like these okay it has various grading depending on how fine the diamond is also it is color coded um, based on various things okay ba sorry based on the grading then we have zirconium silicate so it is a polishing agent or it can be obtained in polishing strips or disc or it is also used as a dental prophylactic paste okay so you can get this paste then we have zinc oxide so if you it is used as uh, by mixing zinc oxide and alcohol and it is used for polishing amalgam restoration then we have dentifices so what are dentifices these are toothpaste okay what is the function of a toothpaste so it has to clean the surface and polish it with minimum abrasion so you have to be careful not to use it in the areas where dentin or cementum is exposed because dentin and cementum they abrade way faster than the enamel okay and uh, what is the function so it assists the toothbrush to mechanically remove stains debris and soft deposits 
and imparts a polished surface okay so therefore they remove caries and maintain healthy gingiva improve aesthetics and reduce mouth odor now what is the classification so first we have it is based on the use of the toothpaste okay so for the first type we use is for caries prevention and it contains fluoride then the second type we use it is for periodontal disease prevention you can uh, it contains antiseptics and antibacterial and it is a synthetic as well as natural then we have desensitizing uh, sorry desensitizing toothpaste it desensitizes based on two principles okay first is analgesics so what analgesic would do it has high potassium salt uh, concentration so it will increase the extra um, extra neural uh, potassium and then it would prevent any impulse from going uh, traveling from there okay so it will not let any impulse go then we have dentine tubules blocking the toothpaste what they contain they contain fluoride and strontium salts and they would just block the dentine so physically uh, the dentine wouldn't be able to detect any changes in the surrounding okay then we have whitening toothpaste so they contain hydrogen peroxide and then we have toothpaste for special purposes uh, so for xerostomia we have toothpaste that contain olive oil and for let's say um, herpes infection we have toothpaste that contain lerifen okay so this is it for the chapter it is generally asked for a short note this should be sufficient okay thank you